Happy Manga Monday. I was actually not sure whether or not I would have the opportunity to do a video today, but since I was running errands, I decided I would bite the bullet and make a video. Today I am going to be talking about Dr. Stone, and this is quite a long series. So far there's over a hundred chapters. There is also a uh, anime you can watch as well if you have access to that. Now I also want to give a shout out to my friend Nitwits. Nitwits. He is or we are doing a collaboration together. It's still a work in progress but I will put his channel in the link below. It is on the Dr. Stone series. It's going to be just like a recap of the first chapter. So if you want to watch that when you have time available, I would love it. And I'm sure he would love it too. So you follow Sinku and he is a very smart high school student and his best friend Teju, who really isn't that smart. He's kind of more of like the muscle of the friends while Sinku is definitely the brains, like the brains and the bronze, you know. So Teju is going to tell the girl of his dreams, who he has loved for a long time, that he has feelings for her. And during his confession, there is this very bright green light that covers the whole sky. And what happens is people start to turn to stone. And they end up basically being like that and it's kind of like a sleep like a lot of people who go through this process they're sleeping and they don't know that they're sleeping or that they've been petrified like uh, initially they know that they're petrified and that they turn to stone but like really fast they kind of like black out of existence now Teju decides to keep himself coherent for the thousands of years that he's frozen and petrified. He just keeps reminding himself of like the girl he loves and how he cannot fall asleep because he needs to confess to her and like save her. Now Sinku stays awake by counting seconds. That is how he manages to stay awake and also how he's able to keep track of how long it's been when he becomes unpetrified. Now Sinku does become unpetrified first before Te Teju but you don't really know that until like a couple pages later. Um, I've only read to chapter, between chapter 20 and chapter 30, somewhere around there. And so, sorry, Teju and Sinku get back together and they meet up and they start trying to rebuild civilization because basically everything is gone. All the huge buildings, supermarkets, everything is back to basic. It's back to step one. They're, pr they're very primitive. It's back to caveman style where they're making spears and trying to find, you know, mushrooms and berries that are safe to eat. And they are able to, because Sinku, being as smart as he is, is able to figure out how to unpetrify people. So when they go to unpetrify the girl Teju loves, something, I think they're being chased by lions, if I remember correctly, because lions have prospered, they escaped the zoo, and now they're doing very well. So they're getting chased by lions, and as they're running away, they come across a guy who is close to their age, but they know him to be, like, very tough, like, very scary. So they unpetrify him first, and he kills the lions basically with his bare hands, and then he cuts the fur off and wears it as his wardrobe so you have this dude running around in a lion coat thing but you think he's cool you think he's okay in the beginning and then very fast you realize that he's crazy he actually starts going around and breaking statues which actually means he's running around killing people because he believes that this is a brand new beginning when he wakes up he sees this as that the world needs to stay how it is now and not turn into what Sinku wants to do. And Sinku wants to get it to where it was when they got petrified. As where this other guy wants it to stay caveman-like. And he also believes that adults are the problem or one of the reasons why this happened to the world. So a lot of the statues he goes around and breaks are adult statues. But then he also gets angry 
and has like a little hissy fit and breaks just a ton of statues and you just you know it's just a bunch of innocent people he's running around killing it's really awful now um, I'm not going to go too much farther into this I will say that they do run into other people other clans while they are out and about so there are people who either have become unpetrified over the time or that were not petrified to begin with and that you know through the generations they have you know had children and you know humanity has survived and gone on and so forth like I said I'm only like 20 or 30 chapters into it I I, I like it so far I think it's pretty cute the artwork is really nice and I think it is a fantastic way to expand your knowledge because the creator actually uses a lot of real scientific experiments or real life things you can do to create these situations so she'll sit there and be like this is how you can make gunpowder or this is how you make wine in real life but please don't do that because you know you'll probably get in trouble if you sit there and you make wine and you're underage so it goes through and it tells or it gives examples of how people used to make wine you know thousands of years ago before we had all this technology and how they are going through or back through and doing that anyway i hope everyone has a wonderful and safe monday thank you for watching and i hope you enjoyed the video bye everyone